Hello, everybody in the world! Awesome, awesome people! Awesome people! And that's you, and that's me. Sorry, I feel like a kid's show right now, and I apologize for that. But anyhow, um, somebody else asked me a question, and um, it was a very interesting one as well. So what happens if I believe in this and my wife or husband or significant other doesn't. And so can I still manifest if somebody else doesn't believe or agree with any of this? Okay, so I think it's an interesting question. One, because it it fundamentally really borrows from this idea that somehow there are outside sources of power, okay? And there's no outside source of power except if you believe there's an outside source of power. Okay, so that's very key. So Neville says it a different way, right? He says there's no belief in loss except the belief in loss, right? So that's all we get. And this applies to this. There's no belief in any outside power unless you believe in an outside power. So what is that saying to this question? Well, if you have somebody in your life and it could be family members, it could be um, your bestie, it could be anybody. And they're, they're actually sometimes maybe even to the point where they're completely disagreeing with you, right? Can they either impact or influence your manifestation? And the answer is yes and no. Okay. Yes to if you believe they can, because then you've given that power to them. Okay. So even back to the original question is, you know, can, does somebody else that I'm spending my day with, my life with, my, my, my everyday choices with, can I somehow, right, be impacted by their disbelief? Yes, you can. You can be impacted by their disbelief if you believe disbelief is an option. Okay. So you have to accept that, oh, well, you know what? That their disbelief makes me doubt. So then you've given your power to them, okay? So then, of course, what do you do, right? So, but let's let's tease this out a little bit more and then I'll, I'll give you some practical tips. But like, basically and essentially, what is happening is there is only one power, right? Here, O Lord, you know, here, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord your God is one, right? We are all one, okay? What that means is we are all God in different flesh suits, okay? So that's us experiencing our individuality, but behind the mask is God, okay? Behind what happens after we go and leave this sphere, right, is all called God, love, source, beauty, whatever you want to nickname it, that's what it is. But while we're here, we're experiencing our own divinity through our bodies and through our relationships and through each other, right? And so... There's a tendency, though, to, I think, understand manifestation or even the work of Neville Goddard through inner subjectivity. And that's just a long philosophical word that makes you sound really cool and fun at parties. But all it means is that we believe what we all agree to, right? And so we think, okay, well, this person was able to impact me 10 minutes ago. Or, you know, my parents impacted me for the you know first 18 years of my life or whatever it is. But here's the thing about this. Can people impact you? course they can if you let them right and so again this is fundamentally about your state which is a body of beliefs so if you believe that you can give your power away you will definitively without a doubt I know that's going to happen if it hasn't happened yet right but if you don't and you believe that all power is within here imagination right and that you can't lose that power and no one can take it from you unless you give it to them then you realize that no matter what's going on outside of you has no power unless you animate it, right? Neville talks about animation and I'm going to do a, um, another YouTube on animation and break it down for you. But the idea of animation is that your beliefs give life, life, like as if they were just full on like balloons that weren't blown up and you've given them life and now they're balloons floating in your world. It's kind of a weird image, but basically, right, you are giving things life by believing in them, okay? And so that means they show up in your world, 
Okay. So then again, if you believe my mom has more power and influence than I do, my pastor or my priest or, you know, whatever religion you hold to has more power or influence over me than you do. Right. And I get that we all have cultural baggage and some, some even have religious baggage and right. Some have gender based norm baggage, like all of these kinds of things that we have normalized and we think are acceptable. We all follow suit if we think that we're going to lose something because if we don't follow it. Do you hear this? This is so key. So again, if you are fearful of being rejected by your significant other, your husband, your wife, you know, whoever you're staying with, living with, brothers, sisters, right? And that they have more influence than you, okay? This is key. Then you are being driven by fear and not the state of accepting your own power. And so I would first work on that. That's your first tip here, okay? Reduce the impact of giving fear to inanimate object. When I say inanimate object, I mean in here. That means you have thoughts and beliefs in here that you've imagined. And part of that imagination is other people have power, right? Other people have more influence than me. My, my, my brother's smarter than me, right? My mom has more life experience than me. All of these kinds of things that we rationally explain and sound logical, we just accept as true. And so, again, the same with our husbands and our wives and our spouses, right? And whoever we're, we're staying with, our imaginary friends, it, it, I don't judge, but just whoever you're with, if you are imagining, giving meaning to and here, accepting beliefs about, right? If you're giving power to them, then yes, they can definitely control and modify and change and alter your manifestation. So again, this is not just about, I don't really like the word self-esteem. Even though I'm in that field, I don't believe self-esteem exists. But I do believe that you can spend time with the inner self, okay? And the inner self is where you want to be spending most of your time with anyways. So, you know, religious people call it having like a quiet time, right? I would encourage you to do this daily, for a minimum of 20 minutes. And if you, if you want to double that, that's even better, right? And some of that would include that you just sit in the imagination. Don't add labels, don't add desires, don't add wishes fulfilled. Just be in it and feel the power. And then realize at the very end, the only thing that you want to say is, this is me. Sorry, I sounded like a Hugh Jackman movie. But basically, I love that song. But I mean, like basically you want to sit in that power, Right. And then after that, after you feel it real, like that power is you, then create the scenes, three to five scenes where your husband or your wife is celebrating your belief system, is on board with it. And if you don't want that necessarily, but that at least you feel the support of them, maybe not believing it with you, but actually advocating for you. Right. Um, if that's not what you want, some people want them to have difference of opinions and that's fine as well, right? But what you want to do is you want to actually work in here with your ideas about this other person. And you want to change those by again, using affirmations, 10 minutes minimum, twice a day. Yes. And this is a technique from Joseph Murphy, who was also a student of Abdullah, the same as Neville Goddard. So, these are great techniques that you can take with you and I would encourage you, but also throughout the day in this world, in the world of lack, you want to begin also reacting from this person that you're staring at, right? And talking to and spending time with throughout a day as this person who supports you. It's going to be hard at first. I get it. It's going to feel like you're, you're, you're like an imposter syndrome, but you have to act that way, Right. And so I am in a, I'm a huge advocate of people doing both inner work and, and outer work because the science shows that you actually create a faster cohesion between the subconscious and the conscious mind. And, that, and that's how we manifest, right? So again, if you're creating a scene, then create something where you feel the support, you feel the celebration, right? If that's what you're doing, or if you're like, I don't really care. So then, well, then create three to five scenes where you're getting what you want, no matter what they're saying, right? And then imagine that, that there's a knob. And remember, you're 
this is all from first person. You don't do third person. You're not watching a movie, right? And then you imagine that there's a knob there. And every time you turn that knob up, you are amplifying the emotion every time. And then when you think it's, it's too much, do it again. Do it 10 more times, right? And then you want to walk away convinced that you are the person who has the support, who has the belief, right? Who has the courage. All those things that you would naturally have anyways if that person were already supportive, right? But to answer the question at the top of this conversation, no. You don't need the other person to believe or even support you, right? You need to find all of that in here. And you can, 100%.